Okay, fellas, we're back at it again. Got everything hooked up here. I think I forgot to show you this radiator, Muhammad, but we do have some cooling here. This P P uh, PWM is a 30 amp PWM. I'll send you a link for this thing because you did um, just send me an email about this. But these are great little PWMs. I've got a readout on them. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I got the, uh, the plumbing rearranged. The intake's now coming out of the bottom here. So that was the one thing I wanted to fix. We're all dried up. I'm going to fire this thing up here. And uh, let's take a look at it. There's the production, 28 amps, 3.7 kilowatts. I think that's off though, guys, because the voltage isn't reading right on this thing. Here is the production. Just insane gas production there. I think that's about 30 liters a minute. We're about to check it out. We are now at 30 amps. Heating up quick. I better turn the cooling fan on. Okay. We're going to do a quick test on this. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it or not. We're at 31 amps. 4,300. Okay, here it goes. And on. Screaming. I think two seconds is 30 liters per minute, but I feel like this thing's pressuring up a little bit on us, guys. That is just some insane production. Jeez. I'm gonna try that again. We're at 34 amps now. 4,600 watts. I'm gonna reset the jug and we'll try it again. Part of the problem is I, I don't have the hands I need. I'm gonna put the camera down and give it a shot real quick. 35 amps power. 4.7 kilowatts, but I'm not sure that's right. And go. There you have it. 234 volts. 229 volts DC. The DC amperage is 28 amps. The production is insane. Let's take a step back at this. This air compressor is not running, by the way. That's so we can dilute the gas with nitrogen for a less, a less explosive flame front. I don't want to blow myself up right away. But uh, there you have it, fellas. That's just a quick look at it. We'll be getting back to this. Running at about 42 degrees Celsius, 32 amps right there. Okay. Now... I'm going to check the resistance of the cell. I got to get a check valve on this thing bad, man. Every time I turn off the power, there's such a large air volume in here that it sucks the water right back out of my bubbler if I don't hurry up and open this. I don't like this gas meter at all. As you can see here, after I turned off the switch, that much more gas issued into the cell or into the tank which indicates there's definitely some stuff going wrong i need to just buy one of those alley cat flow meters and stop messing with all this nonsense you can't really get an accurate reading on wet air anyway or wet gas because water does have water vapor 
I think it's like only 37 cc's or something like that or three cc's I can't remember but it does have an effect I just wanted to show you guys that that uh, I don't think I like this thing I'm gonna try it a couple more times I just wanted to show you this Muhammad to show you what what I'm doing today um, this is the first time I've tested the gas output of this thing And just my guess from looking at it, it was only about 20 liters per minute. Yeah, it's still got a little bit of resistance to it. See how it's not just instantly falling out? So that was giving resistance to the test and slowing down the time, compressing that gas a little bit. Then when I turned off the switch, a little bit more gas came out. So we're... I think I'm done with this thing. It's just not accurate enough. I just wanted to throw something together real quick. I might have to build one of them setups like uh, Steve has. Actually, I think I'm just gonna break down and buy an Alley Cat gas flow meter. I've got so many projects that I need to know the flow rate of the air and of gases. So I might as well just pull the trigger on that. So that's what I need to do, Muhammad. I wanna know for sure that uh, we're getting 30 liters per minute when I'm doing this. So that when you do things on your end, we're not wondering what's going on. So, I'm going to do one more thing to this. Because after it's been running for a while, the foam does catch up with it. I tried putting some carborundum powder in there. It didn't work. <laughs> There's some debris left over from the container I had it in. But uh, other than that... Um, Everything's working great. I just, for long duration runs, foam does start to eventually build up inside this defoamer tank. It's just not quite big enough. If it was this size, I think we'd be in there. So, that's where we're at for now. I'm going to get back to you. Um, I need to just go ahead and pull a trigger on a flow gauge. I'm just spinning my wheels here. <laughs> 